Welcome back to In Doubt Check Out Dialogue with Dr. Nandini Mundkor, where we delve into many facets of childhood and their development. I am Manju Bhargavi, the head of Sangamitra Early Learning and Sensory Integration Center, your host on this journey of understanding children. Uh, doctor, coming back to the next question. Now, how do we know that these interventions are helpful or the intervention that we are giving to a child is going on or is it in the right direction? How do we understand that? See, intervention, when we start, we should know the base level of the child. Mm -hmm. And we have to see whether the intervention is making a difference. Because, you see, a child, whatever level it is, like a child with autism, will also learn something by itself, by looking and practicing. And the brain is wired in such a way. Mm -hmm. But is intervention making the difference or the child learning by itself you know so if you are going to pay money and come to me and i'm giving an intervention i should know so we have to prognosticate scale should be used when you are so a base level and see from there now internationally they use cars you know they say what's the base level of the cars and they have a four point improvement to see whether it is improving or not or like the scale which we have we have the scope profile and we have the base level in each of the learning constructs. And after every six months, we see whether the child is improving and uh, we come to know that, okay, the child is really improved. If not, then we have to go back. So we must have prognosticating indicators to prove that this child is improving that within four months, six months time, how much improvement is done. Also in some areas, if it's not improving, why not? Mm. What's happening? So unless you monitor this, you cannot uh, really say that intervention is we have made a difference in the intervention yeah that's true i think with the with the scope profile that we are also using at sangamitra i think every four months if we try to test a child or re retest a child in the specific domains of learning i think we'll come to know whether the child is in the right track of learning or is there any other extra uh, extra learning or extra efforts that needs to be put for the child yeah that's true doctor moving ahead um, if parent is a mediator uh, in the intervention, will it not affect their mental health? Because as we have a parent-mediated uh, center approach, when a parent is involving in and out with a child with autism, we see it getting very stressful for a, for a parent. Now, how can you help us out in understanding, will this affect their mental health? See, raising a child with autism is a very difficult task. It requires, first of all, to provide unconditional love and support. That's right. Especially if they're moderate to severe and they're going to improve very, very slowly. Parents must take out time and focus on their well-being, mental well-being also. Especially parents with moderate to severe because what is the most stressful thing is the uncertainty. Yeah. What will their future be? Who will look after them after us? What will happen to my kid? The, these are thoughts which will walk through the parent's mind every now and then and perhaps every minute, if at all. So when you are in that thought mood and feeling, mm -hmm. now these thoughts which parents have are not necessarily true. A child with intervention will change. There are strategies. But you see, when we act through this automatic process of our thoughts, moods, feeling, we will be stressed out. There will be anxiety. There will be anger. They, you know, they will say, I am useless. I am good for nothing. I am not able to make a difference in my child. They'll get fatigued. And all this is very common. So parents' support and well-being is very, very important. We have to offer these parents. Every therapist must take time and counsel these parents and give them opportunities for their well-being. You know, So the uh, program which we have adapted based on acceptance, commitment theory, act of parent well-being, which you run, my three, is yes. uh, I think very useful because many parent feedback tells us that it has been helpful to understand their values and give some time for their values because the mind requires self-compassion. I must be compassionate to myself also a little bit. Otherwise, if I'm not happy, how am I going to extend happiness to others? 
if I'm going to stress myself so much, if any time I look at the child, the stress will come, I will not be able to work with them. So parents should be taught how to manage their values, their emotions, which is very, very important, very crucial. Yes, I think uh, the Maitri has served uh, its purpose for a lot of parents at yes. Sangamitra too. Yes. Because as we see, uh, growing up a child with autism is not that easy. And when I am involved in my own thoughts and in my own feelings, sure. I am not helping the child to go in the path that I want for the child to take to. So I think I, I also strongly feel that it's not only for a parent, I feel. I think mm. it's it should be, Maitri is for every therapist who deals with children with special needs because unless and until I believe in myself, I have good thoughts and I have good feelings, I will not be able to deliver the same to the children who are really in need because these children need a total um, uh, total help from uh, it is the extra help that we are giving them and it it takes a toll on us too so unless and until we have our thoughts moods and feelings in place 100 percent true it becomes uh, yeah. very challenging for us to help any child with difficulties and disabilities yeah Doctor, moving ahead as uh, as we see children with autism also have siblings and, uh, there is there is uh, this thought that uh, which says that uh, uh, usually parents have all their hopes on the second one or the first one, the neurotypical sibling who is there. Does this condition of autism, what the sibling, the other uh, sibling has, will? Do you think that it affects the, um, it affects the other child, the second child, or the first child in the family? Yes, the sibling feel very neglected, unsupported, feel that they have more responsibility mm -hmm. at home, they have to look after the other, the, the so-called affected child, which leads to them a lot of problems. I'll, I'll recollect this child of seven-year-old who came to me, you know, because the, the younger brother used to come to us for therapy. And this came, this child came one day and said, asked me a question. Doctor, when will you make my brother all right? I said, what happened? He said, yesterday I took him to play with my best friend's house because I like, and he also has a three-year-old brother. When I said, I'll also bring my brother. He said, yeah, yeah, we'll all four of us play together. But when I took my brother, he couldn't do anything. So my friend said, your brother is very stupid. Don't bring him again. I felt very bad. I told my friend, I don't want to be your friend. You said this to my brother and I bought home. But I love my friend. He is my best friend. He is in my class also. So how only when my brother becomes all right, can I go to play with him? You know, That is really sad. True. We need to understand that and support this child, this child to a, really how to face the situation. So sibling support is so important. Understanding them, give them space, attend to them, to help them also to manage their feelings. Just like the parents, they also need to know how to connect and how to understand their sibling who's got the problem and also navigate their life, you know, which is very, very important. A sibling support program is so important. I think you're la you've launched one year now. Mitra yes. is your program, I think. Am I uh, right? No, it is called, yeah, Mitra. Mitra yeah. Is, uh, is a is a siblings program that we have yeah. started. And I think we just finished our sessions uh, last Saturday. It was great to have these children. It's an eight-week program. And uh, we really enjoyed with the siblings, the neurotypical siblings. And it, it, it gives us so much insight into their world and yes. the anxieties that these children come up with when there is a special child in the family and the kind of uh, responsibilities that they have they have put on their sh little shoulders. And I think it was too much. Each, if any other child says, okay, I've lost just half marks and it makes no difference. But each of these siblings who were there in the program felt even that half marks is a big difference for them. They said, no, I cannot lose this half mark because if I lose half mark here, I may not be able to get a better seat in a college and I may not be able to fulfill my parents' uh, wishes and I may not be able to take care of my brother. So I think I felt just a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old child saying this and taking up so much of responsibilities um, 
it it really um, uh, we got goosebumps when when we hear heard children saying that and when we interacted with them and then taught them how to venture out their feelings how to help them go through the stress levels that they have i think after an eight week sessions uh, children looked happy children looked uh, what they could learn what they could take what they should not take and i think uh, it was a wonderful program i also think parents have to be sensitized not to neglect sure. these kids because you know it's yes. not just the kids alone i think the parents often believe <clears throat> that these kids are okay they can manage which is True. very very wrong it's wrong and uh, i know some typical kids who are very smart who is to be 90% purposely not doing work and coming down to 60% or so True. because they'll get attention <laughs> so it's uh, you know i mean a sibling support program of course involving parents to understand what they are what is in their mind is is very crucial see this is the problem with autism True. it just not affects the child it affects the parents it affects the families it affects the everybody else the, you know so that is why this condition needs a day if the united nation has to pass a day for it we are all struggling for it to give this knowledge that you know it's it's a management of so many factors we have to take care that's so that's true. why and on top of that 1 in 34 or 1 in 100 in number yes It, it, isn't that scary it's very scary and I, i as we are discussing it it autism is a full intervention by itself autism yeah. and i think it just not a child with autism goes through this i think a whole family and a whole society has to be involved in it now that we understand that this whole intervention process takes a whole all on a parent with the extra efforts that they are putting in their schooling their therapies their intervention doctor i would like to understand are there any government programs or schemes to help these parents of children with special needs yeah the government of india has woken up at last okay. and uh, have included autism as a disability there are several schemes available first is to get a udit card which mm-hmm. you can make and every state has this leave but you can get which gives them income tax consumption uh, exemptions then it has a nirmaya scheme for their insurance mm-hmm. there are some scheme called disha which helps them with some financial support for um, early interventions and uh, there are uh, several schemes and and i think the uh, ministry of social justice and welfare you sh- one should go into their uh, website and you can get lots of uh, information on this and it is pretty helpful for parents who are who need this kind of financial support okay so doctor as i understand with all these interventions given to a child from a, a very early age um uh help me in understanding that there will be a time where these this child can be incorporated into a into a formal education setup now if i have to understand that a child is ready for a formal learning um is there any criteria for inclusion or is there any tests that can be done to say that this child is ready to go to a school or this child may not be may not benefit from an from an inclusive setup or may need an ex, may need some extra support is there any criteria no they, when the school the child is ready to go to school in preschool we we do school but you see now with the right to education program we mm-hmm. they yeah. many schools have to take all any child and every child True. you know now this right to education it's not always very helpful but the school job is to create uh, inclusiveness for this child Mm-hmm. so what do the school do normally is they just adapt the curriculum a little bit and they say that okay we are the, we are inclusive schools and we will give them special papers and we'll give them an ios curriculum and mm-hmm. that is one aspect of it you know but the second aspect is adaptation of the environment because mm-hmm. you see an autism child we talked about does not just have learning problem it has sure. behavior problem it has sensory problem mm-hmm. imagine a child who has a sensory problem of is susceptible to loud noise with those 40 50 children can this child be in that environment Difficult. can a child who cannot climb if you not adapted the school for a, to be a, a, you know go up and down or you know many of them can have fine motor problems and and the way the teacher goes you know with the verbal can he take all those instructions and learn so adopt option of uh, adaptation of a school is looking into every aspect of the child and the 
I feel it's just not the child or the management decides that we will uh, do this. And the second thing I feel is they provide the shadow teachers. Mm -hmm. What is the role of the shadow teacher? Mm -hmm. The role of the shadow teacher is to perhaps keep this child quiet in the class so that the rest of the 30 other children learn. Is that doing justice to this child? The role of the shadow teacher should be how do you take those children typical children and also try to give them some kind of adaptation to this kid mm -hmm. you know which let me tell give you an example i went to this when i was in canada i went to this wonderful school it was a nursery school of four year olds and they had what 15 20 children the teacher was there and then they took every day there was an assistant monitor it was another four year old child Mm -hmm. That job of that four-year-old child was to take care of the special children. There was one Down syndrome there. There was a child with autism. There was another couple of them. Each day, they pick up one child and you know, or two children, depending on the number of children they have. And they are given that you have to go and teach this to that whatever the special curriculum of that child is for wow. that child. Not just it. Throughout the day, this child has to take care of. They're taking them to the park, taking them to the toilet or whatever it is. And every day they would change the monitor. So every child got empathetic and compassion with these children. So they knew who needed the special. They said, oh, Kaira, that's not the way to go. Please come here. This is the way we do this. So you can see how they adapted their environment. And everybody sat in the class and learned. Do we do such things? Now, you see, our neurotypical children, the worst thing I feel are the bullies. Yeah. These children, they, we don't prepare our neurotypical children to welcome a special neurodiverse children in the class. Yeah. They imitate them, they make fun of them, they bully them. And these children come with far more anxiety and they're much worse off in a school like this than they would have been when learning themselves on a special mm. schools or whatever it is. I think if the school is truly interested in really doing an inclusive education from A to Z till they bring the last child, that neurotypical child, in mm. taking care of these children is very important. So we don't even announce that we are going to have this child, this one needs that kind of special interest. Please help them. We don't do this. We don't do that. See, there was a non-verbal child in the same school in Canada. He was in 6th, 7th standard. But he was very bright, like the Sevan. You know, he had a picture communication card with him. So they would say, oh, Alan, this your card, your, your class is in second floor, not here. Right. See, every, the whole school was sensitive. That is what is called adaptation to this. That's great. We are That's very great. far from it. Yeah, we are very far. I think sensitizing each child in a school, I think, can make a lot of difference rather than going ahead with the shadow Have, teacher. Yeah, do seminars for them. Tell them what this condition. Right from four or five years, they all can learn if we really want to. Just okay. giving a shadow teacher and just uh, saying that we have adapted the curriculum. And uh, you know, see, they have so many issues. Worst thing is the sensory issues. Nobody is looking at them. Doctor, there are, uh, there are uh, as I see, all these children with autism have some or the other behavioral concerns. We already discussed saying that this requires another another uh, session for us to do behavioral intervention. Now, um, what are why do these behaviors come? And can you just give us a brief insight about what are the functions of these behaviors? Why do children exhibit these behaviors? Okay, three, in the earlier years, because they have poor social skills and poor communication. They don't know how to say what is in their mind. Mm -hmm. Understand that every behavior has a function. It is, the child is trying to tell us something about it. Mm -hmm. Whether it wants attention, or he wants to escape, or he has some sensory issues. You know, mm -hmm. the, the child is trying to tell us something. Okay. We need to understand this. And every parent also to understand what is it that instead of controlling the behavior, we have to control what caused the behavior, what's okay. called the antecedent. Okay. The antecedent have to be looked after, which what happens one minute or 30 seconds before the behavior, which mm -hmm. has precipitated this behavior. We have to deal with that. Okay. And very rarely the consequences. Because... Behavior by itself, what we try to manage, is wrong. <laughs> the child doesn't have control over it. Yeah, I think so. Uh, this uh, we should discuss at at length. Sure. But this is in short what uh, behavior our uh, behavior management should be. And I think 
our parents should be every parent should be sensitized about behavior i th- now as i understand i think it's not only the parent i think it's the job of every therapist who okay. deals with the child or every teacher who works with the child to understand behavior intervention because if you know what is the function of a behavior and you know how to how to protect or how how not to allow it to come i think behaviors can be very well managed very well managed sure I agree with you uh doctor um in a regular school curriculum okay right right now we we have seen that uh, many children uh, after a certain year of intervention uh, maybe uh, maybe they are ready or they are not ready uh, sometimes parents also want their children to be a part of the regular school curriculum what are the alter- other than now for example a child gets into a regular school curriculum the uh, w- w- as far as what we have seen in the school that the children uh, start their schooling by 7 years of age whether they are ready or not ready and then they take a whole long of 4 to 5 years and at grade 5 to be very honest school send them back home so sad because they have their own reason they say that children child cannot manage the uh, school setup or they are not able to manage the curriculum they are behaving is not appropriate and it may hamper the whole other schools children come out at the when they are in fifth now when a child comes out are there any alternative learning platforms for these children or how can we help them when now at that age parents come and seek help for us we tried tested and now it was a failure then they come to us saying that are there any alter- alternative forms of education to help can you en- enlighten uh, us about that yeah i think our a focus of education should be first to develop functional uh, <laughs> curriculum what do i mean is enough to understand language simple mathematical skill can i live by myself mm-hmm. that is it till third fourth standard level of a normal school okay. if these children are capable of learning this they should be first to this mm-hmm. and also encourage these children to do other activities like sports music mm-hmm. art you know all this should be a part of their curriculum for these children which gives them leisure pleasure and all those things okay now even if they can't even do that we have to really look into a kind of pre vocational training for them mm-hmm. or a vocational training for mm-hmm. them which they can you know uh, do uh, do quite well you know uh, whatever they are and and because if you stress them they're going to behavioral issues anxiety is very common in these kids poor things it's you know nobody is understanding them so pre vocational skills vocational skills functional academics you know and uh, and with in- incorporating all the other activities mm-hmm. should be a part of a curriculum for all these children you know uh, which this is an alternative for them you know okay so i so as i understand every child with a diagnosis has a full fledged uh, life and can be helped with the curriculum that are adapted for their level of learning yeah. so doctor it was really great talking to you on the podcast thank um and thank you very much for sharing your uh, insights to us and um you have really been kind enough to take off your time for us and help all of us understand how different is autism and how how we have to help an autistic child not only an autistic child the whole family and the whole society thank you very much for your valuable insight and um as we come to the end of the podcast um remember understanding is the first step towards acceptance and inclusion until we meet next time stay curious stay compassionate and join us the next time as dr answers all your questions related to autism so please post in your questions and get it answered by uh, doctor in our next podcast uh, please write down your uh, questions on staff.sangamitra@gmail.com and in our next podcast we shall answer the questions that will help you thank you Thank you very much. I enjoyed doing this with you and thank you for giving me an opportunity to reach out to people. I hope it was useful. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you.